So Greg Doucette recently launched his new supplement line and I've been getting quite a few comments and DMs from you guys asking what my thoughts are on it. He's got a protein powder and a pre-workout, but this one in particular seems to be causing quite a bit of commotion and that's his fat burner. Um, I was reading through the comments over on Instagram and a lot of people are not overly thrilled with this. Fat burner, face palm emoji, 105 likes. Why would you even sell fat burners, LOL. Fat burners, is this really Coach Greg? Fat burner equals no credibility. Thought you were better than a fat burner. Fat burners, you became the very thing you sought to destroy. So basically that fat burner equals a really expensive coffee pill. In my opinion, using the term fat burner by a knowledgeable person such as Coach Greg is just a cheap marketing tool. When I first saw the fat burner, I thought this was a post about the lies in supplement companies. And that's really just a small sample. There were uh, plenty of other comments along these lines. Now, to be fair, a lot of people were accusing Greg of flip-flopping and saying that he used to be against fat burners. So why is he selling them all of a sudden? So um, I did go back to his older videos, but I couldn't find anything where he specifically recommended against fat burners. And there were actually um, several videos from even a couple years ago where he did say that he personally uses over-the-counter fat burners. So unless I'm uh, missing something or this was some detailed elaborate scheme where he knew that he was gonna be selling a fat burner in the future, um, I don't think he's contradicting himself in that sense. Um, I also wouldn't say that I'm strictly against all fat loss supplements, just as long as people understand the context. So that means that you've got a proper, consistent diet and training program in place, you're in a calorie deficit, and then from there you're just adding in maybe a few extra compounds to slightly increase calorie expenditure, um, maybe slightly reduce appetite as well, and then when you extrapolate that small extra calorie deficit over the course of an entire cutting phase, you might end up with a modest supplemental increase in fat loss. Um, the effects are gonna be minor. It's by no stretch of the imagination a necessity, but for somebody who has all the elements in place and um, has the extra money and just wants to fully maximize things 100%, there are some ingredients that could potentially help out with that to a limited degree. But to actually get a measurable benefit out of it, you of course need to be using the proper ingredients. And just as importantly, you also have to be using them in the right dosages. So on that note, let's go through Greg's formula step by step and break down whether these ingredients are in fact effective, whether they're included in usable amounts. And I also wanna give you um, just a small sort of cautionary safety tip if you do decide to purchase Greg's supplements. All right, so first up, we've got L-carnitine L-tartrate. So if you have um, like a straight up L-carnitine deficiency, then studies show that it can help with improving muscular endurance and fat loss to some degree. And that's usually seen in uh, the elderly and possibly if you're vegan and you're eating a low protein intake. Um, aside from that, there are some studies showing minor increases in fat loss, probably just as a downstream effect of um, just increasing energy levels in general and helping you expend more calories that way. Um, acetyl L-carnitine is sometimes used as a pre-workout ingredient and L-carnitine L-tartrate specifically, um, this form is typically used for bodybuilding purposes because there is some data showing improvements in muscle recovery and improvements in androgen receptor density. But purely for fat burning purposes, um, the data is pretty weak overall. And most importantly, the research study dose for L-carnitine L-tartrate is usually anywhere from 1,000 milligrams per day at the low end up to about 4,000 milligrams. And with this formula, you're getting 100 milligrams. So whether or not L-carnitine um, even works for fat loss is honestly just irrelevant here because either way, you're not getting nearly enough for it to exert um, any sort of measurable effect. Okay, that's one-tenth of the bottom end proper dose. All right, the next ingredient is choline bitartrate. So uh, choline is generally used for its... Uh, cognitive enhancing effects, you know, focus, memory, overall energy. But to really get those effects, you'd want to be using either alpha GPC or city choline because the bitartrate form, uh, which is also the cheapest one, it doesn't actually cross the blood brain barrier. Um, there are studies showing benefits in rats, but those benefits don't appear to carry over to humans. And in any case, again, the uh, dosage that you're getting here in Greg's product is 100 milligrams versus the typical dose of at least 500 milligrams, usually up to as high as 2,000 or even 3,000 milligrams. So this would be an ingredient that is um, almost certainly not effective in any sort of fat loss context, whether that's um, a direct effect or a downstream effect from increasing energy levels. And even if it was, you're still not getting nearly enough of it anyway. 
For example, in this study from 2016, um, it was on memory performance, but even at two and a half grams, it still had no effect. All right, the next ingredient that we have here is called theocrine. Now this is a newer compound. Um, it doesn't have a lot of research behind it, but um, chemically it's related to caffeine and it's usually promoted as having similar effects to caffeine in terms of uh, boosting energy and boosting focus. The difference is that it has a slower onset and then it lasts for a longer period of time. And it's also not quite as potent and there's also less tolerance buildup. At least those are uh, the claims that are usually made. Now it's honestly hard to say a lot about theocrine because there isn't a lot of research to go on. Um, some of the studies out there combine it with caffeine, so it can be hard to specifically assess. Um, there's no exact dosage guidelines, but if you look at most theocrine products, the lowest dose you'll usually see is 50 milligrams and around 200 to 300 milligrams is going to be more common. With Greg's product, you're getting 50 milligrams, so um, it's still within range. It could possibly be helpful in terms of a small bit of extra energy in combination with the caffeine that's in there, which I'll come back to later on. Uh, but there is also some data showing that low doses of theocrine can actually have a sedative effect. So um, there's probably some individual variation at play there. I'm not sure if 50 milligrams would have that effect, uh, but again, it's hard to say a lot about this particular compound. All right, ingredient number four is cayenne pepper. So cayenne contains uh, a compound called capsaicin, which is responsible for that hot burning sensation that you feel when you eat chili peppers. And there are a number of studies showing that um, capsaicin can produce a small benefit in terms of increasing thermogenesis, which is calories burned as heat energy, um, and also for reducing appetite. So that's fine. But again, we have to look at the dosage, okay? If you look at the studies, the typical capsaicin dose usually works out to around two to six milligrams per day. And cayenne pepper has 2.5 milligrams of capsaicin per 1000 milligrams. And with Greg's product, you're getting 50 milligrams of cayenne pepper. So if you do the math on that, that works out to 0.1 milligrams of actual capsaicin. Okay, so imagine you have like a teaspoon of regular cayenne pepper that you bought from the grocery store to season your food with. Okay, there's 1800 milligrams in that entire teaspoon and then you pinch off 1 30th of that amount and consume it. Okay, that's what you're getting in this product per serving. By the way, if you're finding this information helpful, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on future videos and also give the video a quick like to help push this information out to more people. And the next ingredient on the list is bitter orange, also known as citrus orontium. So this is a source of an ingredient called synephrine, which is chemically similar to ephedrine. And there is some research showing uh, what you could call noteworthy benefits in terms of increasing overall metabolic rate. For example, one study showed that the subjects burned an average of 65 extra calories over the course of 75 minutes after consuming synephrine. Um, another one showed that synephrine combined with naringin, which is another ingredient in Greg's product, so I'll just include that uh, here as well. Uh, that combination burned 129 calories, which would be a decent amount when you extrapolate it out over the longer term. But once again, what are the dosages that we're dealing with here? Okay, the research study dose for synephrine usually falls between 25 to 50 milligrams per day. With Greg's product, you're getting 50 milligrams of citrus orontium, which is the actual fruit, and that usually provides around six to 8% synephrine. So um, again, do the math, uh, which I did before, this isn't coming from memory, but um, it works out to three to four milligrams of total synephrine, which um, is actually less than what you would get just from eating one regular orange. And then for naringin, um, in the study that I mentioned, they used 600 milligrams. Um, the typical doses for that ingredient usually start at around at least a couple hundred milligrams, and Greg's product has 50 milligrams. All right, next up we have green tea extract. So uh, green tea has been studied pretty extensively for um, a wide variety of different applications, including fat loss, and there is supporting research for that, but it only seems to really give a significant effect at pretty high doses and also in people who don't regularly consume caffeine. So um, if you are a regular caffeine consumer, um, it's hard to say exactly what uh, green tea supplementation is or isn't gonna do for you as far as fat loss goes, but uh, when it comes to the dosages, the active component in green tea is a compound called EGCG, and uh, different studies will give different dosages, but to really get into the sort of truly efficacious range, you're probably looking at around 300 to 500 milligrams of total EGCG. 
GCG, and the absolute lowest dosage would be around 100 to 200 milligrams. With Greg's product, you're getting 50 milligrams of total green tea extract at 45% EGCG, which again, I did the math before this, but it works out to 23 milligrams of total EGCG. I mean, even V Shreds Fat Burner has a proper 300 milligram dose of this particular ingredient. What's going on guys? There's black pepper extract at five milligrams. Um, that's typically just added into supplements to um, increase the absorption of the other ingredients. It's not really an active ingredient so much, at least uh, not as far as fat loss is concerned. Next up is glucomanin, which is a type of fiber um, that's really thick and it absorbs a high amount of water when you consume it. It basically turns into like um, sort of a gel-like substance in your stomach. And so people will uh, sometimes supplement with this before meals to increase feelings of fullness in order to reduce their overall calorie intake. Uh, there actually are uh, some studies supporting this ingredient and obviously anything that helps to moderate your appetite is going to assist to some extent with helping you maintain a calorie deficit. But again, following the usual theme here, the dosage is key, okay? To truly get a legit appetite reducing effect, the usual dose of glucomanin is at least one gram. Uh, most supplement labels recommend two grams, and you're gonna take that anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour before you have a meal. Um, it absorbs about 50 times its weight in water. So at one to two grams, um, that would be like adding 50 to 100 grams of extra volume into your stomach, which you can imagine um, could have some noticeable effect in terms of um, just giving you a little bit of extra fullness so that you end up eating less. And you can also do that multiple times per day. With Greg's formula, you're taking it once per day and you're getting one tenth of one gram. So that would expand to um, about five grams of total volume, which is uh, maybe a teaspoon worth. And the final compound is Garcinia Cambogia. This stuff was uh, heavily promoted as sort of a miracle weight loss supplement quite a few years back. Uh, Dr. Oz was pushing this stuff pretty aggressively at one time. Um, it has a compound in it called hydroxycitric acid or HCA, and it's claimed to increase metabolic rate and blunt appetite. Um, as far as the actual research goes, it shows some benefits in rodent studies, but those benefits don't seem to carry over to humans. Um, this is just not a very convincing ingredient. And again, it doesn't matter anyway because the dose in Greg's product is 50 milligrams, which is a tiny fraction of what was used in the studies and a tiny fraction of what uh, most actual standalone Garcinia Cambogia supplements provide. And then circling back to the top, we've got 300 milligrams of caffeine. Now that's a pretty decent dose. And so even though the other ingredients in this formula are significantly below the standard research back doses, if you do consume this product, then you're still gonna subjectively feel it working purely because of that caffeine dose. And uh, caffeine is gonna have some modest effects on overall calorie expenditure by increasing thermogenesis. Um, it's gonna blunt appetite to some extent. And of course, it's gonna give you more energy, which could then have a, uh, uh, downstream effect by helping you just train harder in general. But caffeine is a very basic stock ingredient. You know, it costs pennies to include. So uh, I wouldn't really consider this to be some kind of like noteworthy upside to the product. Um, he uses a combination of caffeine and hydrous and di-caffeine malate. Um, that second form is 75% caffeine and 25% malic acid. Uh, I'm not aware of any sort of concrete research on that particular compound. It's supposedly a no crash form of caffeine, but the amount of malic acid there would be extremely small. So um, I doubt that really matters. And the label on Greg's product doesn't specifically tell you how much of each form you're getting anyway. And on the issue of caffeine, um, I mentioned a quick sort of cautionary tip for you at the start, which is to keep in mind that Greg's pre-workout also contains 350 milligrams of caffeine for the full serving. So if you're buying these products as a stack, which I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to be doing, that's just something to be aware of because I know there's going to be uh, you know, plenty of newbies out there who buy this and then combine the products together without really considering the exact ingredients and dosages. Train harder than last time. And they're going to end up ingesting somewhere around like 600 milligrams of caffeine at once, which is a pretty high amount. Plus they might even be drinking coffee or tea on top of that. So to sum this all up, on an individual ingredient basis, <laughs> there really isn't much uh, wiggle room to even debate dosages here, but I'm sure the one argument that some people are gonna make is that, yeah, the doses are low, but it's the cumulative effect of combining all of these ingredients that adds up to something meaningful. And that argument could make sense if you were talking about taking the proper doses and then just using the lower end. But as you can see here, almost everything is dosed at a tiny fraction of the very lowest end. I mean, no one would accept that argument if we were talking about a pre-workout formula. So there's no reason why 
why that applies here either, especially when you factor in the price of $50 per bottle, which comparatively speaking is quite a bit more expensive than most fat loss supplements, even the ones that contain higher ingredient doses and would for sure have higher production costs. But hey, it's up to the people how they wanna spend their money. That's the breakdown of the product based on the ingredients and the dosages, and you can take that information and do whatever you want with it. But I hope you found this helpful. Here's two more videos you can watch now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop on future videos. Drop a like down below. You can follow me over on Instagram for more tips and updates. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video.